Hello everybody, welcome to another Yellow Chair Devotional. Okay, we've been going through Galatians 5, and 23 together where it lists the fruit of the Spirit, so let's say them together. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are the fruit of the Spirit. Today we're on that very last one, self-control self-control what does that mean well if we flip it around does it mean to control ourself well how do you control yourself what does that mean when it comes to being a fruit of the spirit the holy spirit living inside of us with these fruits of the spirit coming out what does that mean sometimes when we think about self-control think about something like mm, you're not supposed to eat a lot of sugar. So even though you got all of these special Easter candies, you can't eat them all in one day. You have to exercise self-control and only have maybe one piece a day or maybe on a special occasion. Or how else do we show self-control? Maybe I really hate having to do my homework, but I'm going to have self-control. And when I am at school, I'm going to use my time wisely so that I don't have homework. Or if I end up with homework, I'm going to do it right away when I get home. I'm going to get it done so that then I can um, have the rest of the day instead of putting it off, putting it off, putting it off having self-control over our habits, over how we treat others. Maybe we show self-control by not yelling at our siblings. Oh, but they're so annoying and I'm so frustrated and I just want to hit them. But I'm going to have self-control and I'm not going to do it. Is that what we sometimes think about most of the time when we think about self-control? That's at least what I've thought about. But we want to know what else does it mean? What does it mean in a spiritual sense? So we're going to look at a few Bible verses together. <coughs> Excuse me. And you don't have to turn to this one. I want you to listen to it. I want you to listen because it's only one sentence long. It's from Proverbs. It's Proverbs 1632. And this was just a proverb that maybe they used to say a lot. And it says, patience is better than strength. Self-control is better than capturing a city. What does that mean? Being patient, it says, is better than being strong. Having self-control is better than capturing a whole city. You know, when we think about, like in the olden days, if they were going to go to war, if they were going to try and invade and capture a city, that took a lot of strength, didn't it? They're saying patience? Self-control, those are better characteristics. Why do you think that is? Because I think it affects every part of our lives. It affects every part. It's really great to be, to be strong, but by being patient, that's a different type of strength. It might be pretty cool to be on top, to win the game, to capture the city. But if I'm able to have self-control even when I lose, by not losing my temper when maybe someone does better than me, does that really help me win? That's what this proverb is saying. You know, Jesus, he summed up the Ten Commandments. If, um, if you were to look in Mark, so the Gospel of Mark, grab your Bible, Matthew, Mark. If we were to go to Mark chapter 12, verse 29. Mark chapter 12, verse 29. So you can pause the video if you need more time to get there, but this is what it says. This is Jesus talking about the law, like the Ten Commandments. And he says, Jesus answered, the most important command is this. Listen, people of Israel, the Lord our God, he is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God. Love him with all your heart with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. And the second most important command is this, love your neighbor as you love yourself. These two commands are the most important commands. So think about this. How do we love God? We love him with our heart. We love him with our soul. We love him with our mind and with our strength. 
And I think those four areas are where we show self-control. We show self-control with how we use our heart, with how we show our love. We use self-control with what we do with our soul, you know, our body, our innermost being, what makes us us. We show self-control with our soul. We show self-control with our mind. What do I spend time thinking about? What do I spend time watching? What do I spend time saying? You know, the old phrase like garbage in, garbage out. If I spend so much time with my mind in places that aren't about loving God, then that's not going to help me in the long run, right? I have to exercise self-control with what I read and with what I watch and what I listen to. And then with all your strength. That means sometimes it's hard. It takes strength to say, I'm going to stay true to Jesus. I'm not going to go along with this. I'm not going to join in with making fun of so-and-so. I'm not going to do that. Oh, it takes strength sometimes to stay with our eyes fixed on Jesus. So to look more at that, we're going to go to 1 Corinthians, okay? So if we were in the Gospel of Mark, we're going to go Mark, Luke, John, through the Gospels, Acts, Romans, and then 1 Corinthians. And we want 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 24. 1 Corinthians 9, verse 24. Now, here's the thing. A few days ago, we read the verse where it talked about, right, like running the race, right? I'm, I'm fixing my eyes on Jesus as I run this race. And these are some other Bible verses where Paul is talking about us running a race. So I wanted to, you to think, have you all run in a race? Have you all run where maybe you've said, I'll race you across the field, and you're running, or maybe you've done a track and field day where you've got to run so far and you're racing against people. Maybe it's just playing tag and you're trying to outrun someone who's it so that they don't tag you, right? But you've all probably run before and maybe you've run and you've run and you've run and eventually, oh, you're out of energy. <clears throat> you can't, you're like trying to catch your breath. Maybe sometimes you've run so hard it's even giving you a tummy ache, it makes you sick. We run and we run and we run. And when you think about maybe you've watched the Olympics when they run those races or you've seen a marathon where they run a really long race, they have to practice. They have to train. They've got to get their bodies strong so that they can run that race. And so let's read what Paul says here about what it means to run a race with Jesus. So 1 Corinthians 9, 24, here it says, You know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize. So run like that. Run to win. All of those who compete in the games use strict training. They do this so that they can win a crown. That crown is an earthly thing that lasts only a short time but our crown will continue forever. So I do not run without a goal. I fight like a boxer who's hitting something, not just the air. I exercise self-control with my body. I make it my slave. I do this so that I myself will not be rejected after I have preached to others. So let's break this apart. Let's break this apart. So, if you're running in a race, he goes, usually one person wins. One person wins. Maybe in the Olympics, right? You have the person who wins the gold medal. And they get to stand on the top of the podium and it's exciting. But he goes, but that medal doesn't last forever. That crown doesn't last forever. He goes, but when we're running our race with Jesus... When we're running with our eyes looking at Jesus, thinking about him coming back someday, we're thinking about that crown in heaven that is ours for forever and ever and ever. He goes, run like that. Run to win the crown that Jesus has for each of us. Each of us. Because the thing is, is we know who wins, right? Jesus won at the cross. 
At that moment, he won forever and ever because he defeated the serpent Satan. So do you and I win? If we're on team Jesus, do we win? Yes. He's got the crowns waiting for us in heaven. It's not like we're having to compete against each other going, I got to beat him to the finish line so I can get my crown from Jesus. That's not what it is at all. No, we're all running together. We're like one big relay team. We're all running together towards Jesus. We know that the crown is already ours. We win. We win. But here's what he says. I don't run like I don't have a goal. Right? Our goal is to be with Jesus. And then, he, and then there's this thing about self-control and like making our body a slave. And what does he mean there? Because some people take this literally and they go, oh, well, we need to like beat ourselves up. We got to be tough. We got Here's what he's saying. The Apostle Paul told a lot of people about Jesus, didn't he? He traveled all around telling people about Jesus. When I spend this time with the Yellow Chair devotionals with you, I'm just talking about Jesus, aren't I? The Apostle Paul here says, I don't want to get so focused on sharing Jesus with everybody else that I don't take care of my relationship with Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, if I spent all this time during Yellow Chair devotionals talking with you about Jesus, telling you to look towards Jesus and run with Jesus this race, but if I don't do that, then it goes, I, I'll be rejected even though I've preached to others. Sometimes we get so focused at church or at Sabbath school or in our families of like, we need to tell other people about Jesus. We've got to spend time with Jesus ourselves. We've got to keep our eyes on Jesus so that we're training. We're training together. We're having the endurance so that we don't run out of steam, so that we don't run out of energy, so that we can keep our eyes fixed on Jesus and keep going. And that's where the self-control comes in. That's where the self-control comes in. My heart, my soul, my mind, my strength, we have self-control over all of those where if we go, Man, I'm doing a lot of stuff. I'm tired. I'm helping with this and I'm helping with that and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. But I'm not taking care of myself. That means I need to have self-control to say, you want to know something? I'm not gonna do that right now. I would love to go over to your house. But I haven't spent some time with Jesus and I need to spend some time with Jesus. Otherwise, when I get to your house, I might lose my temper. I might get irritated and angry. I might not show the fruit of the Spirit because the fruit of the Spirit come from the time that we spend with Jesus. So Paul here goes, our self-control, how we treat others, the way that the fruit of the Spirit come out of us. That all comes from making sure that we're training, we're spending time with Jesus, we're running that race with our eyes fixed on Jesus, so that then the fruit of the spirit of love, of joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, all of them are present in how we interact with others, so that we can love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. It's all part of self-control. All right, let's say a prayer together and we'll wrap up. Dear God, we're thankful that the race is won. The crown is ours. We just have to keep on spending time with you, keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, running with endurance this race. We got to train for it. We can't just expect to get there if we don't spend this time with you. And so we're thankful for this time we can spend and we know that that helps us with our self-control. That helps the spirit and the fruit of the spirit come out of us so that then we're able to share those fruit of the spirit with everybody else around us. We look forward to one day when the victory lap is, is in sight and Jesus is coming again someday in the clouds and we know that the race is over and we get the crown. We look forward to that day and we thank you for your love in your name. Amen. All right. Our last fruit. 
self-control. Here's our lemon so you can decorate and color this however you would like. And then on the back, let's reflect on self-control. Maybe there's some areas where you go, well, this is an area where sometimes I don't have the best self-control. Maybe I lose my temper. Maybe I get frustrated with things easily. Maybe I get a little lazy. We can think about those things and then we reflect on that. How might spending time with Jesus how might training in this race with our eyes fixed on Jesus, how might training with Jesus help us with some of those things where maybe we don't have that self-control? You can even write a prayer in the back here. And then just reflect on self-control a little bit. How do we then run this race? Because like it said, self-control, that is better than even conquering a city. It's an important one. All right, have a great rest of your day and I will see you tomorrow.